spins failing fans, printers producing pasta, and bamboos blasting belts. And my eardrums. All this and more, Print Fix Friday, episode 155. Let's get into it. Starting off, we got one from the Print Farm Academy. Let's take a watch. Yep, all been there before. But this is preventable! This is preventable! I, I, I don't know about the, the P1, but I know at least on the X1, you tell it the material that you have in the machine when you load the material. If you don't actually change that, then the machine has no clue what's in it. So when you send it a file, it's just going to assume it's ready to print. And pretty much most modern printers have this. I know the Mark IV, the Mark IV S both have this check. Even the XL does where if I tell the XL to use toolhead one for a print and if the print is sliced in PLA, but it's PETG, it won't let me print. It will ask me, hey dog, you sure you wanna do this? Cause uh, the way we see it, doesn't look right. And this is the unfortunate problem. You just have to throw all of this away. That is a huge waste of material. For those that know, Print Farm Academy is also the Shop Nation people. At least they do a lot of 3D printing in-house to produce components that they sell online. This is a huge issue because I look at it from a waste perspective, right? We've got a time, we got a material waste. We have all this extra stuff that we have to get rid of because a simple check wasn't done. Being bamboos, they're most likely going to have some level of cloud integration should they choose to. And when you're at the size, you're not doing things under ND, yeah, I can totally understand having a cloud integration. But remember, if you're using NDA stuff, don't trust the cloud because the cloud is just somebody else's computer. And that does mean that your NDAs do get violated. So be careful about that. They likely didn't do the check or they had it set wrong in the slicer as well. Because I know on Bamboo, if you don't have a filament that your material is sliced for, in your printer, it yells at you. Now that's on the X1. I don't have any experience with the P1S other than helping fix a few of them locally. I don't own any of them. So it might be different on the P1S. If so, let me know. Speaking of me, my name's Grant and welcome to Print Fix Friday where we help you get your printers back to printing with purpose. And we would love to help you get to that spot. So if you do have any issues with your 3D printers, you can reach out to us on all the social medias, although preferably, YouTube or Twitter are the two best places to find me. Use the hashtag printfix and tag us in those posts and we'll do our best to help out where we can. And hey, if you like this kind of thing, make sure to leave a like and get subscribed. Moving on to the next, we got squeaking noise from a Prusa Mark IV. I only hear this when it is laying infill. It's not present during printing perimeters. Any guess where this could be coming from? Let's take a listen. That's resonance. That's perimeters, so that's just resonance. Ah, yes, the squeak. The squeak. I bet it's printing PETG. Let's let's find out. Yep, it's PETG. So PETG is kind of known for this. It is actually squeaking going through the extruder gears, going through the next extruder tube. PETG can be squeaky, and it depends on the manufacturer. Some are squeaky, some aren't. I find that the pure PETGs, the ones that don't add a bunch of filler and stuff to it, tend to squeak more than the ones that do have fillers added. But yeah, it's just a PETG thing. As long as it's printing okay, and it looks like it is, I wouldn't worry about it at all. It should not impact your print quality. It is an audible noise that you hear. Also, just because it's gonna annoy the crap out of me, and I'm sure it annoys the crap out of some of you, your love buddy cover thing, uh, th th this back cover here, uh, push it down. It's, it's not properly seated. It's bothering me. Please and thank you. But I'd love to know from you all, has this been a thing that you've noticed? I notice it on a lot of transparent PLAs as well. So like the ice filaments from Printed Solid, who we love their filament, but especially on really thin movements, I tend to hear it squeak a little bit more. Now, I've always attributed that on PLA at least to lots of retractions and you're just kind of grinding over one bit of filament. But PETG, we hear this all the time. Do you guys hear it on your machines? If so, what brands of filament do you hear it on? And do you have any theories as to how it might be happening? Let me know in those comments. Next up from Discord member Nepomuk, who uh, is uh, the poor fan. The poor fan, the actual blade is snapping off this fan. How it occurred, I don't know. Nepo isn't being, uh, you know, too open with us about why, 
but she did say, taken from what I always say, have spare parts. She was ready with that spare part. I remember that I would have this happen pretty often when I'm working on a machine. Here's an Allen key. Bam! Allen key hits the fan, fan breaks a blade, and now it's off balance. I'm not saying that I would just cut the blade off of the other side to keep the machine moving and not have to fix it right then and there, but I, I, I definitely, definitely did that. But on these odd number fan blades, you, you can't do that, unfortunately. You can try. It's not going to work very well. Yeah, if you needed to, especially these, these fans with the swept blades, I find that they're not very strong blades, and a Sunun will be a much better fan overall. It does look like Nepo got something right there. I'm just saying it looks like an Allen key. What do you guys think? Let me know. Next up, a fail of my own from our Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon running that beautiful Ember Prototypes plate because your boy was doing some really cool stuff. Here's what happened. Anybody want to explain to me why that's happening? Over and over and over again. I still don't understand why it was doing that. And I use the term was because what I did is I turned off the machine and left it to think about what it did for an entire day. My best theory here is that a driver was completely overheating. It's not a belt issue. It's not a motor pulley issue. Not that you can solve that on bamboos. But the only thing I could think of is that it is the drivers. So the drivers are on the back of the machine where there is a cooling fan. And if you remember, that cooling fan is not the most reliable. In fact, I've replaced one on one of my bamboos in the past. So I kind of beat the back panel of the machine thinking, okay, maybe the fan stalled out. Maybe it wasn't running well, whatever. I left it for the day. I came back, started a print and it was working. But see, I still have a problem. I got to get a bunch of these metals done. That means we had to go to different lengths. Let's see what we did. Fun fact about resonance. Bamboo plate really resonates a lot on a Prusa. It's just letting you know it doesn't belong. So that's why we're running the plate that's actually made for the machine too. But uh, yeah, quite a bit quieter than the bamboo. Gotta love Prusa. Should have just done this in the first place. I would be sleeping by now. Ended up running the Prusa printer farm to get all the badges done for everybody at this event. Gotta love the ability of just concurrent manufacturing. Each printer could do six every two hours. So with three printers doing 18 every two hours, everyone loved them. That's all that matters at the end of the day, but I am still totally baffled as to why this happens. I've ran the bamboo a few times since then and have had no issues whatsoever. So I am at a complete and utter loss as to what would cause that. I am almost positive that is a driver just saying, I don't want to live anymore. So yeah, let me know what you guys think. That one has completely stumped me and it is not often that I get stumped this bad and apparently giving it the old Fonzarelli fixes the problem. You ain't out of my from the Fix My Print subreddit, delamination in multiple parts at the same layer height. As the title says, I printed Polyterra PLA at 200 on the nozzle, 75 on the bed. That's a little hot, but fine. With 35% fan speed, a little bit low, but also fine. Can such a delamination occur due to the offset? I gave it quite a squish to improve adhesion. Still some warped corners, but how is it possible that there is such an intense delamination spread all over the parts at the same height? All right, let's break this one down. First off, your warping corners because 75C is way too hot. For PLA, like 60, 65 is all that you need. And Polyterra, which has a bunch of filler, you don't need anywhere near that. You could normally run like 50 with Polyterra and get away with it. The reason you have this weird delamination issue is because there was some sort of either a nozzle clog or a jam in the extruder system. Something kept filament from flowing out of your hot end, and then eventually it figured itself out and the machine kept going. It's nothing to do with your Z offset. It's nothing to do with anything like that. You had an extrusion issue. It's a relatively simple thing to deal with. Just do the print again. To be safe, let's go ahead and reslice it as well, just in case there's some corruption in that 
G-code that could have caused this problem, but this to me is quintessential. My printer stopped extruding for a little bit, then it decided to figure itself out, and life is good from there. And while, yes, as some of the commenters are saying that your nozzle isn't hot enough, I don't think it's that problem. I mean, sure, if you want to turn up the temp a little bit, you can. It's not going to hurt anything. Higher the temp, normally the better layer adhesion that you're going to get up to a certain point, obviously. Grain of salt, that in your experience. Run a temp tower, see what looks best. Go from there. But personally, 200C looks pretty good to me, so I don't know if I would complain here. We've got a lot of people saying check the Z rods, and I don't think it's that. We definitely lost extrusion here, and then we got it back. It warped up because it didn't connect anything below it here. We can see that this area did connect, a corner connected a little bit. But yeah, here on this edge, it didn't connect to the thing below it, so it got messed up. I don't think it's a Z-Rod issue. I think it's an extrusion issue. Doing a cold pull is not going to hurt anything, so might as well do that while you're at it as well. Last but not least, huge thank you to Peter, otherwise known as Reprinted 3D, for tagging me in this Aziz. Aziz? Sure. Sorry if I get that wrong. Design works post. Let's take a look at it. I love to know what is up with this print quality too. Not running fast, and every time I run calibrations, filament is dry around 23%. Settings are mostly stock. Anytime I try and run it as normal speed, we get a failure. Not an older machine either. The print here is probably number 10. I wish it would be obvious, like when our last A1 fell apart. Jeez. So we can see here that it started from a wasted another $30 in this very nice polymaker filament. And before anyone suggests it, only 30 30% of the prints survive the stock print bed. At least two out of every three prints work on this hologram one. We've had similar results for different reasons on our first A1. All right, I hear you so much right now. I got a lot of heat for using non-stock build plates when I was having all of my issues with my bamboo. It's not the build plate. Yes, this delamination thing could very much be something due to that build plate. And especially with these PEO, PEY holographic sheets, I like to turn the temp up a little bit more. Personally, I'm not a huge fan of these. I've got a Wham Bam carbon fiber plate for the XL and one for the Magneto X, and they work well, but I do still have a fair bit of warping. And I find that I do have to raise the temps quite a bit because those plates are thick and they require a fair bit of heat to actually transfer it to the part itself. So when in doubt, add a little bit of extra heat. If on these dragons, the wings give you issues, you can add little circles to the feet to give it extra connection to that build plate. That will keep it from coming off as easy. But most likely, in my opinion, this is from the actual nozzle slamming into the print. On these really fast 3D printers, I don't care who makes them, if you don't have enough z-hop that nozzle can just strike into the print itself and with something this delicate completely knock it off the build plate and this sucks because that entire dragon is gone and then we see here with this octopus feller here that even this thing looks like crap too i want to see some temp towers ran because I really don't know what's going on here. We're obviously using some different types of PLA filament, and those don't always play very well together. So we want to make sure that they do play well together, and if they don't, let's adjust our temperatures for those individual filaments to make sure that everything is copacetic. And as Aziz says, the Mark 3S Plus seems to be chugging along without a care this whole time, albeit much slower. You can turn those Mark 3Ss up, Obviously not as fast because they lack input shaping, but I'm definitely saying uh, I've ran Mark 3S's at 4,000 acceleration and they run just fine. Full disclosure, the MMU buffer or lack thereof has caused a bit of an issue where the spool jumped. The rollers need to sort that out. But so far, hashtag Prusa just works. That's what I tell people. It's not a freaking race. You just want to get your parts done and as nathan here says looks like darker filament isn't laying down just right i do what 3d musketeer says and run a temp tower for both prints we see that aziz replies saying as wonky as some of the strong hero filament can be oh you're mixing brands it's printing almost perfect it's like the a1 does not want to do retractions all the zits are the same like yeah it looks like retraction to me and we can see that yeah uh, kind of mucky. You will be able to actually adjust the retraction and things like that inside of either Bamboo Studio or Orca Slicer. My preference is Orca Slicer personally. I think it has a lot more options in there. And quite frankly, I can turn on stealth mode and remove Bamboo's ability to log everything that I'm doing in the slicer. So as you can see here, I said, thanks for the tag from Peter. 
I'd run some temp towers and see. Looks like stringing a bit because of temp or not enough for traction. Simple, simple. And yes, Peter, thanks. He said, happy to do it, Grant. I knew if anyone could help sort it out, it would be you. And yeah, uh, his recommendation of the Vision Miner nanopolymer adhesive would potentially work well too. I've got a nice big bottle that they uh, gifted to us at Rocky Mountain Rep Rap Fest where we talked with the Vision Miner people, card to that so you guys can take a look. This stuff is crazy cool. Smells really weird, but works an absolute treat. For PLA parts, man, Vision Miner will last like 20 to 40 applications before you have to redo it. And that big bottle is only like 40 bucks and they can go for quite a few months or even years, I'm told, before you go through one of those bottles. So especially if you're doing things where you're doing it for an Etsy shop or local farmer's markets or whatever, Having that little bit of extra insurance is well worth it in my personal opinion. And I would hedge that you agree with me because that appears to be a battery backup that you have back there because a little bit of insurance goes a long way when it comes to dealing with power outages and things that are outside of your control. I'd love to know your guys' thoughts because I've wanted to do another kind of business style video, but talking about Etsy and farmer's markets and things like that, because honestly, I think it's a personal trap. And I think that it ends up being a lot of effort for very little money, but I'd love to know your thoughts. Do you want to hear a video all about that? We did one a while back on the you know, business advice for 3D printing from a 3D printing professional, but it seems like a lot of people are doing this like low margin, high volume stuff. I'd love to know if you want to see a video all about it, why I like it, why I don't like it, and give some tips and tricks for those that are looking to get started or are already in the game. EA Sports, it's in the game. Speaking of being in the game, we got the awesome players listed right next to me at the $5 tier and higher that help support this channel and make videos like this possible. Remember, if you do want to support the efforts that we do here, you can do so by joining with those links in that description for as little as $1 a month. And hey, at the $10 tier and higher, you get to come hang out with myself and the entire 3D Musketeers crew in our private Discord server, which I think we're getting up to almost 100 members, which is super cool. Love having all of you guys in there hanging out and we just added new roles and oh, I'm, I'm excited. Finally started to do more of this housekeeping stuff that we needed to do in that server. So if you want to come hang out, we're going to be in there a lot. I think we're planning a game night coming up as well. But that is all I have for you all today. If you want to check out some of the other Printfix Friday videos, they will be right below me. But stay safe out there. Don't forget to call your loved ones. Don't forget to leave a like. Get subscribed. And as always, keep making awesome.